I've always preferred wired earphones. For the longest time, I've resisted buying a phone without a headphone jack. So, as an experiment, I got three popular sets of wireless earphones and compared them over a few weeks. First I'll do a summary, then I'll go into lots of detail about my thoughts. There's timestamps below too. The earphones I was comparing are the Pixel Buds A series. They have no special features apart from the fact they are wireless. The AirPods Pro, they have active noise cancelling, transparency mode, and spatial audio. The Sony WF-1000XM4s, they have active noise cancelling, ambient sound, 360 reality audio, and high quality audio streaming over LDAC, or LDAC. And finally, my good old trusty FIO FH1. They have removable cables, two sets of audio drivers in each ear, and an over-ear hook design. Over two weeks, my opinions kept flipping. One day loving the Sony, the next AirPods, and finally, Fio. In summary, don't get the Pixel Buds. They are the cheapest wireless ones I tested, but twice the price of the Fio FH1. They sound bad, don't have any extra features at all. Google Assistant is the main selling point, but you get the same experience on any wired headphones on Android. The AirPod Pros sound the best out of the box, but they also have the worst battery life. They seem like a disposable product after a few years. Within 10 minutes of me using them though, I knew they were worth it. That's being said, it's not the best with an Android phone. You lose these features, which really sucks. Overall, I think I'm going to return all the wireless earphones, but if I had an iPhone, I would definitely be keeping the AirPod Pros. The Sony WF-1000XM4s. Okay, so I changed my opinion on these many times. If you just connect these to your phone and press play, they aren't that great. It took me a lot of fiddling around to find the right fit, adjust the EQ, and change the settings to get the best audio quality. And you need a compatible Android phone to use LDAC, the high quality streaming feature. They have the best sound when you're in a loud area with amazing noise cancelling. From an audio only perspective, don't get these, but the convenience and extra features might be enough to convince me to keep them. And finally, the FIO FH1. A lot less to say here. Fantastic sound, unlimited battery life, and cheapest price. Can't beat this value for only 69 bucks. So over my testing period, I found a bunch of different quality of life features these all have. So let's start off with something I never thought about before, the mask test. What is it like to take on and off a mask with these earphones on? The Sony's and Pixel Buds are great. I didn't even realize the mask thing was an annoying issue until I got these and I didn't have to do anything. Mask on and off with no problems. The AirPods are not the best. It's better than the wired earphones, but because of the extended stems, it is possible to catch the edge on it. It hasn't happened to me yet, but I have a strong feeling it will one day. The Fio are horrible. If you put them over your mask, you can't briefly take off your mask for a sip of water. But if you put them under your mask, you can't easily take the headphones out and leave them hanging from your shirt. It's just really annoying. How about just putting them in and out of your ears? Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of just putting these headphones in for the first time. You can see the AirPods win this round, followed by the Sony's, and closely the Pixel Buds, and the wired comes in last place by a long margin. I'll give three points to first place, two points to second, and one point to third, nothing to last place. When we do this test again, this time putting the earphones in after briefly removing them, the wide set wins as they're already set up and hanging from your shirt. And the third time, the fear just dangling from my ears, it's almost instant. Now, what happens when you've got one hand full? Let's see this test again. It looks a bit silly, but I have had this happen a few times, and it's always really awkward to do unless you can put your coffee down somewhere. All of the wireless set take the same amount of time, so I'll give them one point here. The wired set takes about twice as long. But the tables turn when we do this again a second time. The wired set takes half as long as the wireless so it scores one point here. And then a third time, wide wins again. One more point, easy peasy.
Okay, so now we're starting to get ridiculous, but here's the grocery bag test. I'm trying to do this with both hands full. I don't know if anyone in their right mind would put any of these earphones on from scratch without putting the bags down, but the reason I'm doing these is for the next two follow-up tests. Often when I was grocery shopping with my wired earphones, I would dangle them from my shirt during checkout, and then pop them back in when I'm walking away. As you can see, the wired ones are so much easier in that scenario. While it is true you can put the wireless earphones into transparency mode so you can still hear everything, I personally think it's a bit rude to be talking to someone with the earphones in still. It's very distracting and strange for the other person, because you never know if they're listening to music or actually hearing anything you say. Alright, so after all these tests, coming out on top is the AirPods with 15 points. They slip right in. Followed very closely with the Fio with 14 points. I'm surprised these didn't win, to be honest. The Sony and Pixel Buds are in last place with a measly 6 points each. Alright, pretty straightforward. Here they all are, going in and out of a change pocket. The Sony ones are a bit big, but they do squeeze in there. The other two cases are about the same size, so they fit in quite nicely. And the wired earphones are a bit of a pain with their weird shape and rubber coating. So, when you're using this to play and pause the music, they're all quite different. The Fio, you press a button on the remote. Not bad, but it's sometimes hard to find that little button. You need a different cable for iPhone or Android. The Sony's just touch your right ear to pause. There's a delay of one to two seconds usually, so you're not always certain if it worked, and you press it again a second time, and then it pauses and plays again. Maybe I just need to be more patient. You can also accidentally touch them when you're adjusting the fit. With the Pixel Buds, the delay to play and pause is quicker than the Sony's. The tone they play is easier to hear too, so I know a lot more if I've done it correctly or not. The AirPods, you squeeze the stems to control them which is so much better than a touch surface. You never accidentally do it when you're adjusting them, and they also instantly make a clicking sound to register you've done it. There's still a delay of half a second or so before the music will actually pause, but the clicking sound is instant and very easy to hear. Although you can't do this with the back of your hand or your knuckle, you need two fingers available. Okay, great. Now into the nitty gritty about sound quality. So I'm being really picky here. If you think about it like beer, just sitting down with some mates and having a cold one, you're going to enjoy almost any beer. Much is the same with these headphones. But if you want to sit down and really think about the flavours in a fancy craft beer, that's closer to what I'm doing here. So the Pixel Buds A series. The Pixel Buds I'd rate a 3 out of 10. If you've ever owned nice earphones, you won't like these. However, if you're coming from the free earphones that came with your phone, these are probably about the same. I wouldn't say they're bad, but they don't even come close to the other pairs at all. My fiance said she couldn't see too much of a difference between any of these pairs, so who knows, maybe I'm just making this all up in my head. The highs are harsh and grating. I was listening to a song I'd never heard before with a lot of high end, and it was so uncomfortable to listen to, I had to skip it. But coming back to it later with my Fio headphones, there was so much more I could hear. I actually quite enjoyed the song then. The mids are very thin, the voices sound distant and stale. And the low end? What low end? It kind of exists, but it doesn't go very low at all. So much is missed with these earphones. All the music kind of sounds like it's coming from within your head. I compared all of these earphones in a perfect listening scenario. A quiet room with no background sound, just sitting there with my eyes closed, listening to the music. For the Pixel Buds, I hope they might somewhat compare to the other ones, but unfortunately they don't even come close. I don't get any enjoyment out of these. Next up is the average listening scenario. Walking around the house, doing the washing up and other chores. The Pixel Buds are not bad for this actually. I just started washing up and grooving to the music. I was doing so many other things that I didn't even think about the audio quality. Now, the worst case scenario, and my most common use, going for a walk beside a busy road. The Pixel Buds are bad. All the cars sound as loud as they would if you had nothing in your ears. These block nothing. So it's super hard to hear your music unless you're at high volumes, but then it's loud and the highs are grating so you start to get a headache after not too long. The Pixel Buds are super ultra comfy, the most comfortable by far, but they don't create much of a seal. These are basically always on ambient sound. There's this mode called adaptive sound that tries to raise and lower the volume depending on the ambient noise levels, but it just sounded like someone was sitting there with a volume slider and trying to be as annoying as possible. Overall, I wouldn't recommend the Pixel Buds. The Sony WF-1000 XM4s. What a name. 
I'd rate it 8 out of 10. Out of the box, I thought they were okay, but I wasn't blown away. After fiddling around and adjusting the EQ to my liking, it's better now. A very fun sound, but definitely fairly bass heavy. I'm breaking this into two sections, before and after I'd ever tried out the high quality LDAC mode. So before I tried out LDAC, I thought the highs are a bit too muted for my taste by default. I did a bit of EQ to bring them up a bit, and after that I quite like them, providing a nice sizzle to the top end of songs. The mids are warm and syrupy. The Sonys have a very rich sound that makes most music sound great. If you're listening to today's pop music, something like Billie Eilish will sound fantastic. Jazz or live music can get a bit muddy sometimes. Voices sound great, but they don't really stand out, they kind of sit at the same level as everything else. They deliver with the bass. If you're a bass head, these will be more than enough. Once I'd EQ'd the bass down a bit, it's fairly accurate, but it can get a bit confused down there. I found it hard to differentiate between the toms and the bass guitar on Coldplay Spies, and in Pork Soda by Glass Animals it's almost impossible to pick what instrument is playing what sound. The soundstage is quite nice, it does kind of blend everything together. At lower volumes, I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of the details, so I need it to be fairly loud to get the full quality out of these earphones. Until I sound on LDAC mode, and I was quite surprised, it sounds a lot better, all the details there, no more muddiness, all these complaints go away. They kind of end up being the best earphones here. So perfect listening scenario. At first, I compared back and forth between these and the Fio, and I was really disappointed. For well over three times the price, I was expecting fantastic quality, but they aren't as good as the wired Fio by default. Before LDAC, there's not that much instrument separation. Listening to something like George Benson's live version of Affirmation, it all sounds a bit compressed. But then after about a week or so, I turned on LDAC, and they really open up. Maybe to what is the best sounding out of all these earphones. Going back and forth between the Sony and the AirPods, sounds like I'm listening to a stale and compressed song in the AirPods, and an energetic and exciting emotion on the Sonys. What a difference. Next up, the average listening scenario. I really enjoyed using the Sonys around the house. When washing up, I had ambient sound on, so I could still hear what I was doing, but also get the music. It just sounded like I had speakers playing in the room. When vacuuming, I turned on noise cancelling, and at one point I accidentally turned off the vacuum, and I didn't even notice because there was no sound difference. Well done, Sony. And now the worst case scenario. As soon as you activate noise cancelling on the Sonys, everything else just vanishes. Although, I don't like how you can't hear anything at all. I didn't hear any bike bells or people asking me a question, so now I have this weird, unreasonable fear that there might be someone screaming for help, and I just walk past and never hear anything. Unfortunately, the Sonys are not too comfortable. They're quite large, so they put a lot of pressure on my ears, and also fairly heavy compared to the others. I'm constantly adjusting them while I'm walking. It's not immediately obvious how you should be wearing them. It took me about a week or so to work out a comfortable-ish fit. After two hours, they get a bit annoying, and it's always a relief to take them out. Every few days, I find a slightly more comfortable way to wear them, and I'm more used to it by now. Ambient sound is great, however, if there's any wind, you get a horrible wind against the mic sound. It's fairly accurate, but it does favour the high end, so stuff can sound a bit tinny and harsh. For noise cancelling, when I first tried out these, I was really disappointed. I had never used noise cancelling before with any earbuds, so I think my expectations were way too high. If you're expecting dead silence, you're not going to get it. In a quiet room, I can't tell any difference between having noise cancelling on or off. Even when going for a walk outside in a quiet area, the difference is barely noticeable, because the passive seal is so good. When walking next to a road or vacuuming, it's fantastic. It totally eliminated all the low end, only letting through some of the higher pitch sounds. The worst part of it is the wind noise. If the wind blows on your ears, it literally pumps the sound of the wind into your ears, giving you that horrible wind sound. You can activate a special wind reduction mode, but it takes a few seconds to activate. When there's a gust of wind, you'll hear it for two or three seconds, then it'll go quiet. But then 20 seconds later, when the wind blows again, the sound comes back. It's much, much better to just turn off noise cancelling in windy scenarios, which is a real bummer. AirPods Pro. The AirPods Pro I'd give a 7 out of 10. For sure the best sounding out of the box. They have such a wide soundstage and quite a neutral style, so every genre of music sounds good. None of the frequencies really stand out to me on the AirPods. It's airy and light feeling. I feel like it could do with a bit more body overall. The AirPods are kind of just playing the music with a fair amount of detail. They're not fun or warm, they're just neutral. The bass does extend fairly low, 
but it only really shows up when it needs to. I often find myself wishing I had a bit more of a kick, but then the real bass line comes in, and I realise that the AirPods can pack a punch when the music calls for it. The soundstage is very wide. Listening to a live recording will make you sound like you're really there. At lower volumes, this still sounds good. So, in the perfect listening scenario, when listening back and forth between the Fio and the Sonys, I really had to try and nitpick the differences. Tonally, they're quite similar. But with the AirPods, they just have a clarity that none of the others do, so it was obvious. I think because they're so neutral, nothing is overpowering anything else. The soundstage is the widest of all of these. And these are the first in-ears that I've preferred over my Fio, wireless or not. In the average listening scenario, the AirPods are fantastic. If you want to block out the sound, noise cancelling works well, or if you want to hear your surroundings, transparency mode is better than the Sony's. But I can't control how much sound it's loading through on Android, so it's best with an iPhone. Now in the worst case scenario, the AirPods don't really have a super strong seal, so the fact that they can cancel as much as they do is quite impressive. I don't really feel like I need to turn off the noise cancelling when crossing the road, because there's still some sound, and I will faintly hear a bike bell if my music isn't up too loud. The AirPods Pro are very comfortable. I didn't ever feel any physical pressure in my ears, but I also never felt like they were going to fall out. Although I did feel a strange pressure using noise cancelling, kind of like I was underwater. I felt like I often had to swallow or yawn to pop my ears. Now I have a more realistic expectation of what noise cancelling can be, the AirPods does it fairly well. The Sony definitely does it quite noticeably better, but the Sony also goes a lot further into your ears and has a much, much tighter seal. I actually prefer the AirPods noise cancelling, specifically because it's not as strong. I don't have that unfounded fear I'll miss someone screaming for help. As for the wind noise, it is there as well, but nowhere near as bad. It kind of just sounds like the wind is blowing on them, like it would with any earphone. The AirPods have a super realistic ambient sound mode. All the comments about the Sony ones apply here too. The Fio FH1, I'd rate an 8. I really like them. They're very close to the best out of all these earphones, but I think the Sony's in LDAC mode take the cake. The highs are detailed, but not harsh. I like the mids. Voices are stunning, it often feels like they're singing right next to you. You can hear each layer of the track, and nothing feels like it's competing to be heard. The FH1 has two drivers, so the lows and highs are very separated, never mixing together. And the bass has great detail. It's not a heavy, thumpy bass, so if you're after a lot of it, you're out of luck. But for a slightly raised, accurate bass that still gets real low, this is great. They kind of have a dark tone overall. Listening to a live recording will make you feel like you're really there, although I think the AirPods beat these out in that regard. In the perfect scenario, I think the Fio might be my favourite out of the bunch, because I don't need to do anything, I plug them into any device and they sound great. But the Sony's new to Android phone that supports LDAC to sound good, and the AirPods only really work well with iPhone. In the average scenario, the cable noise is a bit annoying as you're moving around. I never really did this in the past because the process of putting it on, running the cable under my shirt, and playing the music, I just couldn't be bothered. I'd always use my speakers. In the worst case scenario, the Fio are average here. You can definitely hear the cars, but it does block it pretty well. The music is still easy to hear without making the volume too loud. You'll hear a bike bell while someone say something. Hey Santa, what you doing, man? They're moderately comfy. The over-ear design makes it feel very light and reduces any cable sound you get from most wired earphones. They fit my ear nicely, I can listen for 3 or 4 hours probably, before they start getting annoying, and once they're in, I rarely have to adjust them. There's no ambient sound mode or anything else, but if you just pop one or both the earbuds half out of your ear, the over-ear hanging design kind of makes it work quite well. In the end, all these earphones are like different types of bread. The Sony's are a warm, freshly baked sourdough. The Fio is a nice thick slice of wholemeal. The AirPods, some generic bread from Subway. And the Pixel Buds, it's kind of like you left a cheap slice of white bread out on the counter for a few days and now it's all dry. But in the end, they're all just bread. I really enjoyed comparing all these earphones over the past few weeks. But when it comes down to it, I'm going to return all of them and just stick with my Fio. Paying over three times the price for a very comparable sound is not worth it to me. Even with all the extra smart features, the Fio would just last me many more years to come and I never have to worry about charging them or losing a single earbud or anything. And although wireless audio has come a long way in the last few years, I've still got a long way to go before I can truly compete with wired audio. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.